Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to talk about fail safe in Snowflake. So in the previous video, we have already seen what time travel is and how time travels works. So in extension to that, I'm going to talk about fail safe in Snowflake. Because usually what happens is whenever we think about time travel and whenever we think about fail safe, we kind of think them synonymously, but both of them are completely different. So in today's video, we are going to see exactly what fail safe is in Snowflake. So essentially, when we talk about fail safe, what exactly it is? So when I talked about time travel in my previous video, what exactly I explained is time travel is nothing but the ability to go back in time and access the data, right? And how much back you can go? I have explained it in detail, but the maximum time uh, is 90 days, right? You can go back in time for the 90 days, not more than that. But now what happens to the data after 90 days, you know, where does that data goes? So actually after, you know, the time travel period is over, the data is actually moved to the Snowflake fail safe. Now the Snowflake fail safe database where the data is moved after 90 days, after it completes 90 days of the time travel or the time travel, which you have defined in your query right after that particular time period the data will go to the snowflake fail safe database it is moved directly to snowflake fail safe database and after that you cannot do any time travel action on the snowflake fail safe data right so once that data is moved after the time travel period is over whatever you have specified it will move to snowflake fail safe uh, database and you cannot query it because this particular database is actually managed by snowflake itself so in case you want to access this data or you want to you know know more about this data you have to reach out to them right and remember that that the snowflake fail safe is not for time travel so the time travel is completely different. This is what happens after time travel. Now time travel, if you feel that, okay, after 90 days, you still want to retrieve the data, you cannot do that using fail safe because you cannot access this data itself. This data is completely handled by Snowflake and the use of this Snowflake fail safe is in case of disaster management only, right? It is only used to preserve the historical data. Snowflake fail safe is only used for ensuring that the historical data is protected in event of any kind of system failure or any any kind of system failure, but it is not used for time travel. So you we need to be very clear on this part that it is not used for time travel and it is very different from the time travel. And even in this particular diagram that you see, right so the first is your current data storage which you are using and then you do time travel retention and this time travel retention also uses a storage because the data is actually stored for 90 days and after that it is moved to fail safe which is completely handled by snowflake and it is only used by snowflake you cannot do any kind of operations on it right you will have no access to it now this fail safe is just a data recovery service and nothing more than that only data recovery service it is not for any time travel so i think this point is very clear and also remember that you know let me just show you this particular chart so you can actually see that we have already discussed right for time travel retention period for permanent tables you know by default it is zero to one right for enterprise addition you can make it up to 90 days for transient or temporary table it is zero to one days right this is the range of the time travel retention period that you can have right similarly when you talk about the fail safe period right transient and temporary table do not have fail safe period they do they have zero fail safe period by default so transient and temporary uh, tables are by default not recoverable in case of any disaster right fail safe period for rest all other tables is like it's just permanent so all the permanent tables is seven days in both standard and enterprise edition 
so i hope you understood this part i would also like to show you this particular snapshot so essentially from the account usage right you can get insights of your data so in fact i'll show you on the screen right now as well so if you go to the account section under that you check the usage right you can actually see that how many credits were used by each of your warehouse what kind of storage was used how much of the storage is used right how much storage is used for the fail safe that also you can go ahead and check how much storage is used by the database how much storage is used by the stage so all these things you can actually go ahead and see so let me go to the portal and show you so on the left hand side you know here what you can do is you can go to the admin tab now the moment you go to the admin tab you can go to this usage option over here and you can select the warehouse right you can let's say you select warehouse test right and it takes some time to just update and then you can actually see how many credits were used let's say in all time and then i can actually go ahead and select the compute right what kind of uh, usage i'm trying to track so right now it is still refreshing so you can actually see that i have used my test warehouse right and from my test warehouse what i want to check you know i want to check the compute which has been consumed the storage which has been consumed how much data has been transferred you know and what on what object right on uh, because these are my databases right my database test database these are the ones which we have been working on and these are this stage we have worked on in the stage as well in our previous video so all object storage i want to get the data related to the storage of my all object so most all of my storage you can see right now is being used by stage right and similarly if i go down over here you can actually see at the object level as well right so for example if i hover over this right this blue option right this blue option is nothing but the database how much you know uh, storage is my database consuming similarly fail safe so if you can see my database has let me just hover it, hover over it so you can actually see the fail safe right that my database is actually using 11.4 kb of fail safe storage right and the database is using 26 kb of the storage right so this is how you can actually do uh, some analysis you can actually check how much it is using so even the stage if you check over here right the stage is actually using 174.4 mb over here storage right so similarly anything that you want to check regarding the compute as well right how many credits were actually you are actually being used by your warehouse right by your test warehouse right how many how much credits are being used so you can actually go ahead and check over here similarly if you want to see the data transfer right then in that case you can simply click on the data transfer and you can actually go ahead and check it since we have used copy activity in our previous video you can actually see that it shows copy activity copy related transfer right so i hope you like this particular video do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for being till here